Hello everybody, Some Kind of Cyborg here back with another Elden Ring video. Before I jump in, I'd just like to offer a warm welcome to all the new people joining the channel. The support you folks have been showing in my Elden Ring endeavours has been enormous, and I really would like to offer my sincerest thanks for the motivation and encouragement so many of you have shown. I'm a far cry from perfect, but I'm nothing if not committed to improvement. Looking to the future, I will continue to adapt, evolve, so that when the cyborg uprising reaches its zenith, I may bathe the world in 110% effort and keep providing you folks with something I can put out and continue to stand behind. So, once again, thank you. Today, I'm going to guide you on the path to acquire the late game incantations you will need to cement your position as Elden Lord. I was originally going to include builds for both Malekith's Black Blade as well as a Sacred Relic Sword build I've been playing around with, but the video would have been insanely long, so stay tuned for that video sometime in the next day or so. There will be spoilers ranging from mid to end game, and though I've done my best to avoid key boss fights, there will be heavy locational spoilers, which due to the nature of the video will be impossible to avoid. You have been warned. First off, I'm going to go over the Giant's Flame incantations, which can be boosted in a manner like Godslayer incantations by acquiring the Giant's Flame seal. This seal can be found in the Giant's Conquering Hero's Grave in the southwest of the mountaintops of the Giant's area. When you reach the room in the dungeon with the Shadowed Troll, you simply want to jump down the ledge to the floor beneath, beat the plump sort there, and from a corpse propped against the wall, you can acquire for yourself the seal embodying the last embers of the giants. Giant's Flame Take Thee is a 30 faith, 2 slots required incantation, which sees the user hurl a massive fireball to immolate their enemies. It can be charged to ramp up damage and explodes over a wide area upon impact. This is the Kobe incantation of choice in Elden Ring. Like a lot of fireball type spells across Souls history, it's affected by gravity, meaning it's often beneficial to use the spell unlocked to massively increase the range and truly dunk on your enemies. Next up is Flame, Fall Upon Them, and I'd like to take a moment to personally nominate the giant spells for coolest names in Elden Ring. A 28 faith, 1 slot required incantation, which sees the user dash multiple fireballs over a wide arc. Once again, it can be charged and will see increased ranged when used unlocked and angled appropriately. It can also be thrown point blank at the ground to concentrate the blast radius. Unfortunately, enemies can only be hit by one instance of fireball per cast, which knocks this incantation down a few rankings in my book. That being said, it's great at clearing trash packs from a distance. Both of these incantations can be acquired upon finding the giant's prayer book and handing it over to everyone's favourites here, uh, Pope in a half shell. You can find the giant's prayer book inside a chest in the Guardian's garrison in the mountaintops of the giants. Shocking, I know. To get there, you're going to have to make your way through a couple of faith users who neglected to level up vigour and then the mini-boss, Chief Guardian Argenthi, who, upon defeat, began immediately reconsidering their future career prospects. Head up the ladder, and there you have it, the Giant's Prayer Book. I, I kind of thought it would be bigger. To round out the Giant's Flame lineup, we have Burn, O Flame, a 27 faith, 1 slot required incantation that is very reminiscent of Chaos Pillars from Dark Souls, but without the lava pools. It sees the user concentrate flames in their hands before striking the ground to raise pillars of fire in a random area around the user. It can be charged to saturate the area with even more pillars and enemies can be hit by more than one. If you're good at timings and spotting openings versus larger enemies, this can output some great damage when buffed by all the relevant flame boosting equipment. You can trade for this incantation by offering the Remembrance of the Fire Giant upon defeating the aforementioned Big Boy in the area shown on screen. 
The next group of incantations I'm going to show all belong to the Dragon Cult School of Incantations, and will therefore see a boost when cast using the Gravel Stone Seal. I've unfortunately lost my footage on that particular seal, so I'll link the wiki showing you where to grab it. The lightning incantations I'm about to mention will receive a further damage boost when used during rainy conditions or enemies are otherwise wet, including standing in water. These first two can be acquired upon trading in the Remembrance of the Lich Dragon. In order to get both, you're going to have to duplicate the Remembrance at a walking mausoleum, the huge stone beasts with hanging bell ends that can be found roaming around the world. To obtain the Remembrance itself, you will have to take on Lich Dragon Fortisax, a boss you can meet by following Fear's questline and entering her dream when you find her in the deep root depths at the point shown on screen. Death Lightning is a 42 faith, 2 slots required incantation that sees the user summon forth pillars of, guess what, Death Lightning, which will do initial damage with the strike and then leave lingering clouds of death fog, the same produced by basilisks. These clouds annihilate fellow tarnished, and we'll see them instantly die should the death meter fill to the top. The second incantation acquired from the Remembrance is Forty Sax's Lightning Spear, a 46 faith, one slot required incantation which sees the user stab the ground with two huge forks of red lightning. They will do damage with the initial strike, and then send forth waves which will damage anything they come into contact with. It's slow to start up, however it's capable of great damage and will clear trash packs with ease. It also has mild evasive properties as you do levitate into the air slightly on use. Whilst in the deep root depths, you can also acquire Elden Stars, a 50 faith, 2 slots required incantation which sees the user clasp their hands in prayer before unleashing a slow moving bolt which streams small, damaging stars. Though the damage is negligible, the best use for this particular incantation is to inflict massive posture damage, leading to easy guard breaks. If you get this spell off whilst under the cover of a summon, you can land critical hits all day long. You can grab this incantation by heading west from the Great Waterfall Crest Site of Grace. Climb the roots and then head into a nearby cave. Watch out for the many, many ants. The only good bug is a dead bug. I'll put the root up on screen now. Ancient Dragon's Lightning Spear is a 32 faith, 1 slots required incantation that performs very differently to its non-Ancient Dragon counterpart. Instead of grabbing the bolt and hurling it forwards, you will instead rip the lightning from the sky and strike the ground, sending out a wave of crackling pillars which will damage anything they come into contact with. Following that, there's Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike another souped-up version of its non-dragon cousin. The user channels for a moment before calling down a storm of red lightning pillars which will continuously strike the ground whilst expanding outwards in random directions from the user. Both of these incantations can be learned upon procuring the Ancient Dragon's Prayer Book and once again delivering it to our favourite open-minded incantation tutor. You can find the prayer book in Crumbling Farum Azula, in the centre ground floor of a partially destroyed building, not too far from the Crumbling Beast Grave Depths Site of Grace. Now for the ultimate dragon incantation, 
and perhaps one of the overall coolest looking spells in all of Elden Ring. Placid Dusax's Ruin is a 36 faith, 3 slots required incantation that sees the user emit a burst of red lightning before saturating the area ahead in lasers of white hot death. It can be cast whilst airborne to add some evasiveness to the lengthy animation and is capable of outputting absolutely insane damage. The initial startup is also an excellent way of putting out an immediate burst of damage with almost no startup to catch low health genemy genemies? enemies off guard. Now, let's move on to one of the final boss remembrance incantations. Scarlet Aeonia is a 35 faith, 3 slots required incantation which sees the user ponderously ascend skyward before bounding down toward the ground. And this is where the technique will end in most cases. Three whole slots to cover 15 feet or so? Not exactly what I'd call a great trade-off. In all seriousness though, the user lands before blanketing a huge area in a scarlet explosion, which will cause massive rot buildup in anything caught in the circumference. In order to obtain this incantation, you must defeat an enemy most foul. S see what I did there? Because because what waterfall dance? Get it? Yeah, yeah. Millennia, Blade of Mikola. Upon defeating her, assuming you ever do, you can trade her remembrance for this incantation. Frozen Lightning Spear is a 34 faith, one slot required incantation that has the user stabbed down with iced lightning. It's relatively quick, causes damage with both the initial burst and the follow-up wave, and covers a huge area in front of the player, as well as inflicting frostbite buildup. In my opinion, it's one of the best lightning-based incantations in the game. This technique can be acquired upon defeating the boss, Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella. Found in the southwestern section of Einzel River, accessed from the Einzel River well. You can get there by taking a lift just north of the Carrion Study Hall. Last, but not least, we have Lansax's Glaive, a 40 faith, one slot required incantation that sees the user sweep a lightning glaive across a wide area before them, which is then followed up by a wave of red lightning. It knocks down humanoid enemies, is relatively quick and covers a huge area. Another incantation which in my opinion outshines a lot of its later game peers. This can be obtained upon defeating Lansax in Altus Plateau. You must first trigger his encounter by the abandoned coffin site of Grace before finally hounding him down and finishing him off by the rampart side path site of Grace, just outside the walls of Lindel. And there we have it folks, there's one final offensive uh, late game incantation to cover, but I'll be going over that in my Malekith's Black Blade build, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider leaving a like, and subscribe if you would like to see more Elden Ring content. Until the next one folks, take care and have a good one. Peace!